Hey there, welcome to Subnautica. I'm sad to say that if you're looking for a blind playthrough, then you won't find it here. And I legitimately mean that I'm sad that I can't play this blind again because I absolutely love Subnautica. And I want to get a more or less complete save of Subnautica up on my channel before the Arctic DLC hits in 2019. Anyway, let's dive in. We're going to be playing a new game on survival. We got a decent pile of mods, but they're all quality of life and UI changes, nothing that really affects gameplay. And with regard to the gameplay, I'm going to be trying to show off what I consider to be effective strategies, how to get things done quickly and safely, that sort of stuff. If I can't be blind and terrified, then I'll be the second best thing, which is vaguely competent. Anyway, where were we? Being shot out of the sky? Uh, that's a rough place to be, isn't it? So, as you may have noticed, I don't really plan on talking during cutscenes. So, not like it's a pretty chill game, so I'm going to be talking less than I normally would to begin with. And as you may also be noticing, this game has an amazing soundtrack. Now, I could put out this fire, but I'm just going to sit and chill for a bit. Something I was always surprised by in Subnautica is the fact that it has, like, smoke pooling graphics, despite the fact that it all takes place underwater. Should I save myself at some point? It's a nice rave. I guess I should. Um. Alright, that was a little bit broken. It's fine. Oh, I absolutely love the PDA in this game. It strikes pretty much a perfect balance between actual useful tutorial, dystopian future, and hilarious snarky companion. You have suffered minor head trauma. This is considered an optimal outcome. Case and point. The PDA has now rebooted in emergency mode with one directive. To keep you alive on an alien world. Please refer to the data bank for detailed survival advice. Good luck. We're going to get right outside because the whole crash pod is messed up. Nothing useful in there. So let's go see the world. And uh, the world of Subnautica is kind of, you know, really, really beautiful. A uh, fun thing that I learned while I was, like, testing all my mods and getting my setup right for recording. Bit of a spoiler for new players, right? Like, I don't think they'd open their inventory up here and they'd have to be looking in one of the right directions. But that seems like you to notice it. So, let's dive right in. Oh god, that's a terrible pun, isn't it? Look, I'm just trying to say generic YouTube lingo. I'm not trying to make horrible jokes. This bladderfish will not escape me forever. may have unexpected applications. Utilizing alien resources is a proven survival strategy. Copper is an essential component of all powered equipment. Your probability of survival has just increased to unlikely, but plausible. So if you're wondering how I'm mining so quickly, I have it bound to scroll wheel down instead of left click so it's faster that way. I mostly have it this way because I don't want clicking to show up in the background of the video just non-stop. But it's also just legitimately faster. And this thing I'm on top of is a giant coral tube, which is just about the most plentiful source of resources in the early game. And crashfish, as always, are chumps and easily avoided by taking winding paths. If you can't find a winding path, there is still a way to avoid them pretty consistently. They have a massive turning radius, so you can just actually swim at them and they won't be able to turn fast enough to get to you. And I was planning on leaving because I'm going to drown, so I guess the crash fish is even more reason to do this. And as far as I'm concerned, you can never have too many bladder fish. They're your source of water, they're a source of food if you desperately need it for that. It just solves all your problems. I've always thought it was hilarious that I can just put fish in a box and they won't die. Food will rot once I cook it, but fish in a box, yeah, they'll be fine. So we're getting our first oxygen tank, which is tremendously useful. 
we more than double the amount of time we can spend underwater in one go. We're also getting our first scanner. And that's just fantastic, because we need the scanner for basically everything, but in particular, we need it for the sea glide. The scanner can be used to synthesize blueprints from salvage technology and to accord alien biological data. We're also just going to build a locker, because we know we're going to need it eventually. And you may have noticed that I haven't necessarily built all the things that I need. Like, I can build this water even though I put the bladderfish into a box. And the reason for that is because some of my mods, EasyCraft I think is the name of this one, allow me to build things without having them in my inventory, or even without having the components built. It will automatically build the components for me, I don't need to build them myself. And that's just a huge quality of life thing that I absolutely love. I'm going to set this box outside. I'm sure it'll eventually be filled with something stupid. Not this stuff, though. This stuff goes on the grounds. I don't want this at all. And I want to find a kelp forest real quick so that I can make a knife. And it looks like there's some kelp over there. My game has slightly higher draw distance than vanilla. It also has slightly increased murkiness. And the effect of this is that there's almost no visible pop-in except for things like grass. I'm also using a reshade filter. I should know the name of this off the top of my head, and I'm a fucking terrible person for not knowing it. But if you do think my game looks better than yours, please look into the description and find the name of the mod developer, because he absolutely deserves all the credit that I'm completely fucking failing to give him. Sonotica really is just an absolutely beautiful game. Let me quickly destroy this alien beauty, though. I, I need this more than the world does. I wonder if there's a mod to get rid of the oxygen warning. I'm actually going to save and check that out in a bit, because I'm very curious if I can get rid of this. I was planning on heading straight back, but there seems to be a cave here. Hello, Mr. Crashfish. This is pretty easily demonstrating the fact you can just swim past them. He clipped me a bit, but we're still completely fine. Detecting sulfur deposits in the local cave systems. Sulfur is an essential component of the repair tool. I'm sorry to tell you this, PDA, but I'm way ahead of you on the sulfur front. You only need two pieces of sulfur for the entire game. After the first two, all you can do with it is make extra tools. And you don't really need spares, so that's pointless. Or you can make flares, but god, why would you make flares? I still don't even understand the point of them. So, now that we have some creep vine cluster, that can be turned into silicon rubber. And thanks to UI mods, I don't need to do that myself. So I'll make some fins, and I will also make a knife. And just to clear up inventory space, I'm going to make all of these creep vine clusters into things, because... 2x2 two two is massive, I don't need that much. So then, with the repair tool finally built, after admiring it a bit, shocking ourselves, you know, like a survival expert, we're gonna fix the ship. And with the ship fixed, the main benefit of this is that we have the radio on. Like, that seemed important. I can't tell you what fixing this actually does, because we already had power. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned how important it is to kill the entire population of bladderfish, but these are your source of water for the early game. They can also be a source of food if you're desperate for it, but everything in the world is a source of food. Bladderfish are your only real source of water outside of finding salt. The double juke. And I swear, yeah, there's a second one somewhere. Could have sworn that I heard a second one and it just didn't do anything for a while. I'm reasonably sure he just hit me through the wall. Hard to tell though, because I'm too busy running away from him to really be sure where he's at.
And it's a bit harder. Well, that ain't right. So is it authentic or not to include broken mod experiences in the Let's Play? But I have fixed my UI file. I messed up the config file when I was changing it to eight slots. Don't ask how. It's very simple and I still managed to beef it. And everything's good. Also, I cannot seem to find any mods that would actually get rid of uh, the oxygen warning. So we're stuck with it. It's not a big deal. Like, I don't particularly mind the oxygen warning. I would just like it slightly more if I didn't hear that constantly. Are you dead? Nope. Totally fine. Just very still. Oh, I wonder if it's actually being so still because it's nighttime. I've never seen a fish, like, actually sleeping in this game, but that could have been what I'm experiencing. I doubt it, though. I feel like I'd have seen fish sleeping by now. But seriously, the basic gameplay loop of Subnautica is so gratifying. No one likes you, Crash Fish. Have I mentioned that Subnautica is a beautiful game? <laughs> have I mentioned that Subnautica is a really, really well-built game that has no glitches? No? There's a reason I haven't mentioned that one. But seriously, Subnautica is so pretty. Like, I guess we just use this as the thumbnail for the whole series, right? Because it's so fucking pretty. Oh, also, something I haven't been doing that I definitely should. This visor on the edge of my screen? F6 gets rid of it. That's not even a mod, that's base game. I hate that visor. It's a little bit dark for me to tell where I'm at. I've got no idea where that cave was. Is this it? It must be. Ah! Could you not? A little bit spooky. Hilariously, the gasopods are one of the scarier things to me now that I've finished the game. I'm actually unable to deal with gasopods sometimes. I just show up on top of them and they beat me up. So, back to the ship. Let's make some new things. Alright, so I can't really build anything useful right now. I'm just going to reduce the size of my stash, get rid of some things. And if you don't know about this, you can hold shift while you're in this menu, and it'll cause the menu to stay up while the item is building. I don't really know why this isn't just enabled by default, because it's objectively better in almost every way than the original system. Detecting increased local radiation levels. Trend is consistent with damage to the Aurora's drive core sustained during planet fall. I like how it feels the need to be like, it's consistent with crashed ships, and it's like, I kind of figured, PDA. You don't need to guilt me about this and act like it could be something else. I know it's the ship. Okay, so I really need silver and gold at this point. I'm going to head over to a different biome to find some silver because that's the most important resource right now for me. To get silver, what we're going to need is a sandstone deposit as opposed to limestone. And there's just not a whole lot of sandstone going around in the shallows. I also need to start looking for uh, the sea jet, I suppose. But I mean, the Moel Bay is also pretty cool. The Sea Jet? The Sea Glide. Jesus, I'm terrible. I'm the worst. Here's a piece of the Sea Glide. Fantastic. Halfway there. I think we might actually already have the materials to make the Sea Glide. Oh yeah, I'm good not getting stung today. And I saw bubbles coming up over here, so I think I should just be able to find it. Yes, here. Rather than going up top, I'm just going to use these to stay down here. Honestly, this is slow enough that I might have been faster going to the top and coming back down. Well, either way, we're done now. New creature discovered. I did not remember that IIs existed. Hey, we're, we found what we were looking for. Unfortunately, lead is the worst thing that could have been inside of it. 
Well, gold is useful, what we really need is silver. There we go. We need way more than one, though. Well, I'm sold. That seems entirely trustworthy to me. A beautiful fish like this wouldn't lie. <laughs> oh my god, I couldn't even hear it because of the fucking uh, mesmer effect. The PDA was trying to warn me about drowning due to loss of awareness of my surroundings while I was being hypnotized by a fish in a cave. I've never had that happen before. That was really well timed. Alright, um, I'm gonna let the Mesmer have that cave. I'll go find a new one. I feel like I've already gotten most of the sandstone around there. More gold. Silver's what I really want, though. Hey, there we go. I think I need one more. I want a wiring kit plus an oxygen tank, if I'm remembering right. Which is three total. I believe I'm back in the Mesmer's cave. I've already mined this out, so I'm just gonna be on my way. Or so I thought, but apparently I'm terrible. Hey, that's enough silver. I think lead really annoys me as a resource, just because there's so little use for it. And it comes with gold and silver, which are two of the most useful things. I don't see any more boxes around to get sea glide from. I'm just going to take this from you real quick. Oh, I can't. And he doesn't want me to take it from him either. I've never tried to take it from one while it was in his mouth. The light rays drifting through the water in Somnotic are one of my favorite effects. Also, the two moons that are always around, vaguely silhouetted. I can't find the second moon just now. That said, I don't think the massive frame drops when you surface from the water are particularly beautiful. That might have needed to be fixed. Hey, Radio, what's up? Lifepod 3, uploading our coordinates. We're plugging some holes in our emergency sea glide, so if we're late for the rendezvous, don't panic. Also, don't go home without us. Seriously. Three out. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Right, I need some table coral. I'll be back in a second. Ah, I also need acid mushrooms. So now that I've gotten some mushrooms and some table coral, I can make my habitat builder, which requires us to actually figure out where we want to live, unfortunately, because I have no plans on where I'm making my base just yet. Is designed to construct habitats capable of withstanding extreme environmental conditions. Time to go put the rest of these fish in a box, as always. And I guess I should, like, grab all these other fish. I'm going to need one of every fish. Welcome to activity. Enjoy your stay. I have new friends for you. Welcome to the family. Okay, so I can stay underwater for a decently long period of time now. I want to fix these hotkeys. Flashlight on the far side is pretty much all I need to do right now. Right, uh, I want to find a sea glide fragment. That shouldn't be that hard to do. It's pretty much the only thing that spawns in the safe shallows inside of boxes. So let's go look for that for a bit. Ah, uh, yes, the Gary fish. The most majestic of animals. Now, I'm pretty sure the sea glide's right here, but first I need to catch all of these bladder fish. This is critically important. So, grab traps are kind of useless. There's really no reason you would ever need one. I played my whole first game without making a single grab trap. Now, that said, grab traps are probably the funniest, most entertaining item in the game, and I regret not using them enough during my first playthrough. Ah, yes, the prank box. That one has a bush, which is not particularly valuable scientifically. So very soon we can start making incredibly useless grab traps, which, you know, isn't quite the thing I wanted to come away from this with. I can see a crate down here. And A, this one actually has the sea glide in it. There we go. Also, this is grab all of the bladder fish, as always. I don't intend on dying of thirst anytime soon. At this point, I'm just hunting them to extinction out of spite. This is just mean. 
So I'm gonna swim back to base, make a sea glide, and admire my massive collection of bladderfish. So my first box for bladderfish is filled up. I guess I need to make a second bladderfish box? For now, they can just live in here, too. I hear stuff's happening. This is life pod 6. I have a passenger on board. Coordinates attached. We've landed a kilometer from the crash site, but there's radiation in between us and the rendezvous. Request immediate assistance. Six out. The sea glide will increase your effective exploration range. For your safety, please pack supplies for long journeys and stay within five kilometers of the nearest life pod or habitat. Signal coordinates corrupted. Approximate transmission origin recorded to date to bank. So it looks like people won't help and we can totally save them. What are the odds they're already dead? Okay, so I've set up another <laughs> set up another box for exclusively bladderfish. So these are our bladderfish boxes, and this is our every other kind of fish box. This is very humane. This is exactly how a scientist would treat life on an alien planet. And uh, I believe we have our new favorite toy. So a great mod is the Sea Glide Map Controls mod. If I want to turn the light on, I just use the Sea Glide. Easy peasy. If I want the map, I press Interact. As opposed to that crazy thing where you had to scroll forever in the base game. But the point is, now that we have the Sea Glide, we can zoom around real good. Can we jump onto the top of this like a dolphin? No, not even close. That didn't work at all. Let's try that one more time. Hey, we can actually manage it. Fantastic. Those guys are a little bit bright. They look like they're just swimming above the water sometimes. I think that's because they are. I'm going to try not to worry about that. It turns out we have another message, though, so let's check on that. Zazi from the cafeteria. What the hell, guys? They didn't warn us this might happen. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system, and this grim-looking snake thing's trying to eat through the hull. Come get us already. Signal location uploaded to PDA. So I'm just going to head out and look for the other coral tube right now. I don't really have much of a plan. We're sort of in an awkward point where because we played the game before, we're way ahead of pace. And we need to wait for the ship to blow up to get the radiation suit. And that makes things kind of awkward. Because we can't just go to the ship now and start progressing the game. We have to wait for it to explode. And I think at this point we're done collecting bladderfish. It's been a good joke, but uh, we kind of don't need as many as we already have. Is the flashlight way stronger than this? Not really. So I guess I'm just going to be exploring random caves right now. There we go. What a beautiful species. I have no idea how they evolved in such a way as to commit suicide at the first sight of a predator, but there you go. Life finds a way. Man, these guys are real lucky. I don't feel like hunting them to extinction anymore. Alright, yeah, there are two moons. I'm not crazy. Good. So I'm thinking that if I can't find anything particularly suitable soon, I might build my base around here. I'm not sure. I'm on the general right side of the map that I want to build my base on. It'd be neat to build, like, on top of that spire. Oh, hey, I haven't captured you before. Can I capture this? Yes, I can. New creature discovered. Actually, I should just grab all of these Reginalds because I kind of need them for food. Wait, is it Reginalds or the Oculus that's the best for food? I think Regi one of them's best for food and one of them's best for throwing into a bioreactor. I can't remember which is which just now. I think Reginalds are best for eating. One way or another, I need a giant pile of these dudes. And while we're here, we should probably start scanning the Seamoth, because if we can't actually go to the ship... Hey! Do you mind? 
Who was that? You son of a bitch. I'll scan you. So here the PDA is telling me about the jelly shroom caves which have an entrance nearby. That's not surprising because they have entrances just all over the place. I'll be showing that fairly soon, but not just now. I don't even have a reed breather, let alone a sea moth and a depth module, so we're not going to be handling that just yet. Alright, let's head back down and see if we can't find any more pieces of the sea moth, because if I can't go to the ship, making the sea moth is a pretty good goal to have in the meantime. The scanner room is really cool and useful, but I almost didn't use it during my first run, just at all. You look new. Hey, new type of fish to throw in the box. Welcome to captivity. Enjoy your stay. What is this? Sea moth, right? I'm not seeing any more bits of sea moth lying around, so I believe I'm done with this rack. And now is probably a cool time to mention a new mod, but I'd rather not drown while talking about it, so I'll head to the surface. So let's head over to the map page, and you'll notice there's actually a mod to give me a map, where it just reveals where I've been. And I can also change it from topographic to biome, so it'll color code what type of area it is. And you can set this up so that it'll actually just show everything, and there are additional tabs, like if you go down, there are Jelly Stream, Lost River, and Act, just all the areas in the game that aren't at the same sea level as this. This is just the ocean floor view. And I really, really love this mod. This is just great. I have nothing bad to say about this. I understand why it wasn't included in the game. Because the way you're forced to triangulate your position with this ship and beacons is really nice. But I've already played the game that way. So rather than doing that again, I'm just going to use the map this time. And I guess I should scan the reef back while I'm here. It seems like the polite thing to do. And uh, how full is my inventory just now? Pretty much completely full. So I'm not going to worry about getting all the stuff on him. By which I mean actually harvesting the plants on him. Let's head back to base. My inventory is full. I need to drop off a bunch of fish. Build some things. Um, actually. Well, I can't build the mobile bay anyway, but... Let's go find another wreck. I can probably get a sea moth pretty soon. That's the one I was just at. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. It's fine. We're only drowning a little bit. We're only being eaten a little bit. Alright, so hopefully we can find the rest of a sea moth here. It looks like we have. Fantastic. Ignore the incredibly angry shark thing. It's fine. We're just going to scan everything else while we're here. No fear. And I guess we're going to have to come back down here. There's no real reason to pretend that's not the case. So just head up now. I'd rather not drown being stubborn. That is some ridiculous hops, though. Can I scan this? <laughs> no, I cannot scan the forklift. Damn shame. Unlike the bar table. The bar table is much more technologically valuable than the forklift. Alright, so now we have a bioreactor set up and ready to go. Alright, that looks like it's all the tech here. I'm going to drop a piece of titanium and grab this before I head out. Oh, great, it was lead. So I'm going to drop the lead instead. And it's time to head home. 
I'd say we're going to build a Seamoth when we get back, but I don't think we have the mobile bay ready yet, so we're not going to be building a whole hell of a lot. Caution. Continued degradation of the Aurora's drive core may result in a quantum detonation. Continuing to monitor... So yeah, the ship may be exploding in a little bit. It's fine. Worst things have happened to better people. I guess I'll just accept my death. So, first of all, we can't actually build the, uh, thing, right? Yeah, we need more parts. The, uh, thing. I'm a very eloquent man. Alright, so one of every fish we found so far goes in there. And we can just slap our mass-produced fish in here. Welcome to your new Reginald friends. No one's got anything to say to us. I don't feel loved anymore. Alright, so I'm going to need to make another box. And this should be the last box we need to make, because next up we're going to be making a house. I need a wiring kit and fiber mesh. Can't I do that already? Oh, I never got fiber mesh. Well, I'll be doing that in a second, then. Set this box away from all the others so that it's apparent that this one is different. And it gets to have inorganic stuff, in general. So we're just heading over to the kelp forest real quick to grab some kelp samples so that we can make that into fiber mesh and get the rebreather. Might have destroyed the environment a little bit, it's fine. And the reason I got six of them is because each two makes into one fiber mesh. I need two for the radiation suit in a bit and one for the rebreather right now. I'm just going to drop the metal salvage and the titanium beneath the ship, rather than making new boxes for it. And actually, I think I'm going to call it here for the episode. Next episode, we need to do a lot of things. We need to get a mobile bay fragment. We need to build that. We need to build the sea moth. We need to watch the ship go up in flames. And let's be real, most of all, we need to keep doing irrecoverable damage to the local ecosystem. This has been rather incoherent. I hope you've had a good time. Like, comment, subscribe, and all of that shilly channel growth nonsense. I'll see you around.